Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to another episode of Baruin Build. Uh, today, you may be noticing a few things that have uh, altered in our texture pack. And I want to show you that, but I need to chop some trees down for today's episode. So very for the first thing that I wanted to say before we get started is one, I've been doing a lot of work on the Patreon, and I will say that is done. Uh, I, I still, there isn't anything on it yet. Uh, I've been working on some textures that I wanted to get out before releasing the actual texture pack on Patreon. Um, but I will say the Patreon is officially complete. Next episode, I will probably do more of a spiel on that. Um, and give a direct link and stuff. I'll put a link in the description, but uh, I'm not gonna like put a ton of emphasis on it right now uh, because it's still a work in progress a bit, but the whole concept of it is done. Um, and uh, the texture pack should be able to release here in maybe a week or maybe even less time. I don't know. I haven't really totally thought through when exactly I want that to take place. All that aside, today what we're going to be working on is right over here. I have filled in quite a bunch of stone here. Um, and what we're going to be doing is making the sawmill portion of this whole lumber yard tree nursery type of area. Um, so we've got our chopper downer right here. The crane moves it over right here. This big one is where the spruce will go. So it will lay, they'll, it'll be dropped right into place and then it will be pushed through and chopped into smaller uh, five long logs. Um, and it'll be this, the, the spruce wood is more like it's got to be chopped up into smaller logs and then it'll be taken into these smaller mills um, that I'm probably honestly going to actually space out um, instead of having them just be like right butted up next to each other. But that's okay. We will uh, figure that out in a little bit when we get building. But today I have actually a few things that I want to talk to you about. And I have a few things. Oh, yes, we're wearing our diamond armor. I figured we should get back into wearing our diamond armor if netherite armor is going to be the new hot commodity. Uh, I definitely want to wear netherite armor because it looks cool. Um, and I've also figured, you know, as much as I like having the game being a little bit more difficult, uh, being able to run my face into things without fear of, of just straight up exploding. Um, it, 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 it's kind of nice. Uh, so yeah, but today what I wanted to do is discuss with you some texture pack changes, uh, and then also some planning stuff for the steampunk city. Cause I have done actually quite a bit. Emma has been gone for the past like three days or so. So I really haven't had, uh, really anything like I, I usually hang out with her, but she's uh, been gone. So I've been uh, filling my time with planning the steampunk city out. And I think it's been good. Also been able to make a lot of headway on the Patreon. So that's been good. So before we get into the planning, talking and stuff, I'm going to do that while we build up one of these mills. Um, let's get into I need to gather some resources here uh, in order to do this build. So let's go ahead and get into looking at the new textures, because as you can see, there are some new textures in the stone bricks. Um, I figured let's go into the creative world, take a look, see at the new textures. Um, and then because there's more than just the bricks, there's a few other things, chests and all that stuff have been changed as well. So let's go ahead and get into gathering resources for this build. Um, and then we'll take a look. We'll take a look at the textures and then come back and do some a building on camera. Don't know if we're going to finish all of this today, but I definitely want to do a certain mill because it's a pretty cool build. Got to say, it's a pretty cool build. So let's go ahead and get on in it. Well, that uh, transition didn't work as well as I thought it would. Okay, getting into some of the texture changes. So I've changed our chests to be a little bit more consistent um, and also do be, to be just a little bit more simple. Uh, before we had sort of plank, a plank look, and I decided I, I, I went with more of the strip log. Uh, I originally played around with the birch idea for the single chest, and then I kind of figured why not represent more of the wood types. So the double chests are oak, 
This is birch, stripped birch, and then this is dark oak for the trap chest. And then, of course, the double trap chest is our uh, little coffin, and I have overhauled this a little bit, made the front piece here just a little bit more grungy looking, uh, and then also worked on the bottom side texture to be a little bit nicer, a little cleaned up, and I think overall this texture has turned out very, very nice. Now, I've been working on the iron. Uh, because we're getting netherite blocks, um, I've been trying to figure out how to use iron door, I, the regular iron texture. And so I've originally our iron was like a dark blue, uh, gray type of color. And I may switch this back. Uh, I may switch it back to the original idea we had with the darker color and just kind of go with it. Um, I've been experimenting trying to figure this out. And so this is what I've come up with so far. It's just, it's like the regular iron block, but with a little bit of a blue tint to it. Um, and the door itself, I have changed completely to being a much more modern looking door. I, I don't know like how much, how I like this. I don't know if I really enjoy it or if it's just kind of meh to me. I'm not really sure. One thing you'll also notice is right now birch leaves are a little bit, I've changed them back to being green, but for some reason the texture pack is not really picking up on the, just having them be gray. Um, and so I've tried to figure out a like a decent green to just set them at so they're always this green. Right now this is a little bit muddy green and I'm not sure how I like it. Uh, I tried to make it as close to the regular birch color as possible, but I just need to go in and figure this out. This is one of the types of things that I just need to figure out as we are sort of experimenting with the texture pack. So currently, this is what birch leaves are like, uh, but we will eventually figure out what in the world's going on with those. Some random textures you may not actually like know I've been messing with, but this is actually endstone. Uh, I've changed it to being a much more kind of colorful sort of cobblestone. Uh, and I honestly, I really like how it's turned out. I actually really like how this, this cobblestone-y feel looks with the sort of still in stone texture. Uh, I haven't changed the actual in stone. Uh, actual in stone act still looks the same. Um, but I would change it to being, to be able to match this and be more like a stone brick type of thing for this type of color variation. But this is a random texture I have never shown. I, I don't think I've shown. Um, and so just thought I'd show that. I also have been working on nether brick, making it a little bit more usable, I think, um, and kind of experimenting with build styles as to how to make it useful. And I think it looks actually pretty cool. I've added, uh, I think there's like nine textures in there that make it make a variation pattern. So you've got some light bricks, you've got some dark bricks. Occasionally there's some with holes. I think overall it looks very cool. Haven't made this stair texture variation. So it's just really the actual brick. Um, there's a hole. I have some holes. Don't know if I like those, but um, yeah, I think overall this has turned out to being pretty decent. Got some long bricks in there. Um, yeah, just been experimenting around with this because I, I like nether brick and I like the concept of it, but I wanted to make it a little bit more usable. And here comes the big kahuna. So I have been working on the stone brick texture. And the main reason why is because I, I it's kind of boring when you only have one stone brick. So I've kind of tried to make a more interesting stone brick texture. Um, with a lot of variations and some different types and different grunginess of bricks. And I think overall the aesthetic is nice. I need to obviously smooth out some of these connections so that they're not quite as obvious. But I think from afar, they it adds a lot, makes them feel at least a little bit more interesting. Uh, so we have, I think, 10 textures in here. We've got kind of like a double slab feel that are a little bit brighter. We've got a big brick portion here that is, uh, I think that's the rarest one um, to find. We've got lighter top bricks. We've got dark, uh, we've got a dark top brick, dark bottom bricks. Uh, this is actually flipped. So you've got a big brick on the bottom. And so just a whole bunch of variation. I think it looks good, especially in builds, adds a little bit of variation into the builds. Let's see if we can find one here, right here. So here is our Sarthal build. And I think it just adds 
to it. Um, we also, it goes really well with our andesite as well. Uh, it almost goes a little bit too well. We may need to change andesite to be a little bit different. Uh, but overall, I think it's good. There are stair variations in as well. Just got done figuring out how in the world to make that work. And uh, that was a pain in the butt. But those are the texture changes, at least all of them that I can kind of think of right now. Um, and if I if I come across any more in the world, we'll obviously take a look at them real quick. But I think that is going to be it for the textures. Let's jump back in to the world and get to talking about some of the plans and also get to building. Okie dokie. So we I've done a little bit of uh, transitioning around as to what the plans are going to be. Uh, so now everything is spaced out. So there's one, two, three, four, five. I think there may have originally been five. I just spaced it out so they are. Th there's three wide gaps in between them, and then we can kind of have pathways that lead up. And you, you'll see, you'll get it once we actually build it. Um, so we're going to be working on this guy right here, kind of in a good position. Don't feel like working next to the edge quite yet. Uh, so we're going to work on this guy right here. But one of some of you may have been. Uh, interested in what in the world this is right here this circle so the idea is this is going to be the sawmill area where they're they're sort of like chopping everything up there's going to be log piles right here just to designate like packaging and stuff for them to be shipping things out and this is going to be almost like a um sort of like or originally we were thinking mine carts and stuff and i was think, thinking like why not have my a mine cart system but we can also have like a flying transportation system so this is kind of like a helicopter pad is what it's supposed to it's going to be resembling this is where they load up things onto the flying machines that they have uh, probably going to be held up by like balloons and stuff um and so not going to be totally helicopters but they are going to be basically just smalling. Oh my gosh, he scared the snot out of me. I have, as you can see, lots of llamas. And uh, sir, do you have anything good to trade? No, not really. I mean, the slime balls I don't have much of. But you, sir, eventually you will fall off this place and I will forget about you. Um, but that is what that is. That is going to be something for later once we get this this sort of area uh, figured out. I wanted to kind of put that there as a placeholder just to kind of get the idea out there. Um, also, one thing I wanted to note, also look at all the, the, the texture variation. Doesn't it look so good? Oh, I just love, like some of the textures aren't the best on their own, but when mixed together, it just adds so much flair. Like look at the Octacore now so much better and yes i haven't installed optifine quite yet but that's okay i 115 runs well but it just adds a little layer of depth to our build without us having to try too much um, and this place uses so much stone brick that i figured having a little bit of variation is always good um, but this is i've been working kind of out where the border of this area is going to be and so this is actually going to be a bridge. So the crane is going to be entirely separate. It's going to be entirely separate from this entire section. This is all one big chunk of stuff. And there's going to be big old windmill things underneath. Um, this is going to be separate because I wanted this crane to be able to fly off on its own. So the idea is like when if they have to make repairs to beams that are in the octacore or they have to use giant logs somewhere else, instead of having to figure out how to transport those logs around via like ships or flying services like this, the crane can literally just like pick one up and then fly off, deliver it and then pop back into place. So it's going to be kind of a retractable bridge, if you will. Um, and so I thought that was a kind of a cool concept and also explains why the crane is here. Um, it's not necessary. It's not like something that is key for this area's functioning in terms of being able to cut logs and stuff. They would be able to probably handsaw these in half and then bring them over to get chopped up. Um, but it does make this activity a little bit easier. Anyways, let's go ahead and get to building. So I've modeled this off of the Skyrim, uh, sort of the the log mills, the, what are those called? Wood mills, log farms. I don't know what they're called. I forget the name. Um, but I've modeled them off of Skyrim 
and that's what we're kind of going with so it's going to have a similar feel and aesthetic but i think they were done so well in skyrim that they just feel right so this is actually not going to be uh bricks what we're going to be doing here is each one of these areas here i have sort of laid out where pillars are um, and then we will kind of I, I tried to mark it out so it's pretty simple and easy for us to understand but while i'm building i don't necessarily want to discuss the build itself i'm just going to kind of build and talk to you um, so the thing that i want to discuss with you is actually well first let's go ahead and sleep so the thing that i want to actually discuss with you today is the plans for the city so i've been doing a lot of planning around what the city is going to look like in game slash what the i guess i shouldn't say look like necessarily um what the end game goal is of the shape and size and distribution of factories and houses and etc the plan what is the plan for the city and i've worked through some stuff this weekend um and since emma's been gone i've i've kind of just taken the time to really try and sit down and figure it out and I really like the plan that I've come up with so now on screen you should see an image pop up and if you don't dear me this is going to be awkward um, but you should see an image pop up and that is going to be the plan for the steampunk city here coming in the future so what you're seeing is the plan for the steampunk city and it's kind of a, a let's try and plan it out and see what the district sizes are and, and, and like where things are going to be um, so it, this is not at all guaranteed um, or anything like that it's more of a me trying to figure it out um, and so i can actually like get into planning out our builds a bit more because right now i'm kind of going like I, I don't want to say I'm like not planning them out because I, I think it's obvious enough that I at least try and plan things out. But in terms of the city itself, that has been that planning has been pretty lacking. And the reason for that is because I just wasn't sure where to take our entire city. I just really wasn't sure. So I've been thinking through exactly what I want to do with each of the districts and the various ideas that I've kind of thought through before. Um, and I've had uh, some changes of heart as to what I think we should be doing and where things should go, etc. Um, and now I'm going to walk through just real briefly what each one is going to be. So in the center, you see we have the octocore. And the octocore is not going to be moving because that would suck. Uh, so we're not going to be moving the octocore or anything like that. Uh, just wanted to point that out. And then you see sort of an industrial residential area around that. That is going to be the area that is kind of designated uh, already in an octagon around our octocore area. Um, that's kind of like going to be the main residential area for this upper portion. And we'll get into the that side of things in a little bit because there's a little bit of interest here uh, as to where houses are actually going to be going. So the external area is going to be the that little external area is going to be like industrial residential area. It's going to be the probably upper class type of living. They are the closest to the core. So they are it pretty much imagine like city living houses aren't nearly as big or expansive. There's not going to be land or anything like that. Not really any land. Uh, we'll try and incorporate some grass and stuff just to bring a little life to the area. Um, but it's not going to be much of anything compared to our like original concept. I don't think uh, there's going to be nearly as much. Now you see the various different rectangles there. Uh, that is going to be what we are working on currently is the lumberyard tree nursery area. And you can kind of see the cranes sticking out there. And so each one of those rectangles is going to be various different farms. It's going to be kind of uh, just hit or miss as to what it actually is. Um, and I, it's going to be interesting. We're going to have to figure out exactly how we're going to be going about doing, uh, each one of those. But as you can see, they're all kind of themed. Um, so we're going to have the lumber yard, which as much is like what we're working on now. Um, and then we're going to be working on the potentially we may get into like the iron farm or uh, area um, or we'll be getting into like the harbor district i have some really cool thoughts on the harbor district um, and then there's also the miscellaneous farms which can't be really covered in anything 
Um, originally, we were going to be having the Flora District, um, but that is no longer going to be a thing. The Flora District is no longer. That, I, I am going to say, is no longer a thing. The reasoning behind that is I didn't think it needed to be a full-on district. In my mind, I think it should be sort of a governing body. Um, and so it's going to cover all, they're going to basically head up all the green spaces, um, that are within the city and by green spaces, I mean like the parks and the, all that sort of stuff. They're essentially the parks and rec of our city. Um, and I thought that was a better fit for them. I didn't think it made as much sense to make an entire district for the Florida district. Um, and so instead they're going to be spread around. It's going to be spread around all over the city. It's going to add green spaces all over. Um, in between each of these streets is going to be like tree lines and stuff like that. Um, and so I thought that was a much more interesting way of going about doing this. And now two, the last two things that are, that are pretty obvious are the farming sections, the farming section of the city. Uh, that is the yellow portion that is going to be flying underneath the city. Um, and there, it's going to be like interconnected islands. Um, I thought that was going to, that would make it more interesting than just floating, like uh, floating greenhouses. Um, we may have a couple greenhouses for like plants that require different biomes. Um, but we, it's going to be like much more of a, uh, free range farming type of situation where there's going to be animals, there's going to be all sorts of crop fields and stuff, but they're going to be on like floating islands. I thought that would be really cool and interesting. And then finally, the green spaces that you see dotted around are different little villages. So this is where the residential aspect of the build goes because the we need more houses. Um, and in order to get more houses, what I decided to do was kind of do what a lot of Americans do at least, um, and live outside of city. I mean, it's not necessarily, a lot of people do this. Um, you live outside of the city and then you kind of commute in. I thought this was an interesting idea and it'll allow us to build in different build styles because I want to make each town different. Uh, I don't want the towns to feel the same. I want them to all feel unique and different to themselves. Um, and you can see the orange little portion that's in the center of each. They are all going to have their own sort of mini octocore um, that is going to be mainly just like a powerhouse to keep the place flying. Um, and it's not going to be like the main like distribution of gunpowder and all that stuff. They're going to be much more just like engine based types of things. So I thought that was a really cool idea and makes it so that we can have more unique build styles and make the city even more unique. Um, and then, yeah, I think that is kind of the idea. I do have an idea for one town being destroyed um, and it's kind of sunken. One of you had the, uh, that sort of idea and I'm not really sure how I, I like the idea and I, I would love to incorporate it, but I think we have to build up some of these towns first in order to kind of get an idea as to what the shape of those are going to look like. So all of that said, boy, whew, man, that was a lot of stuff. And we're not even like halfway done with this build. Actually, we are pretty much halfway done with the build. Um, that's kind of the idea that I have going forward. I think that that's going to make this place look a whole lot nicer uh, and I think it's going to make it feel a lot more interesting. Um, and it also allows me, the reason why I'm, I've kind of gone through this planning phase, um, and uh, I, I was originally planning with Emma being gone, I was going to plan on working on the texture pack and the Patreon, and then do a lot of backlogging for videos. Um, but I decided to do this planning stuff instead, because you can see like how much effort there is to build up the one of these rectangles. All of the rectangles are going to be solid stone and they're going to have like giant windmill things underneath them to hold them up. And they're going to play a part in holding the octacore up. So it's going to be like four key giant windmills that help keep the octacore up so that the octacore itself just has one windmill type of thing underneath it to keep it flying. So it's going to be, that's one reason why it gives explanation as to how the octacore is flying, but it also will help me. I can just build out a set rectangle on every single one of these sides on the octacore. And then we have a platform already done to be able to start building and we can plan builds and stuff and do basically this 
but in all of these areas. So then it makes planning for both the content and YouTube and stuff, but it also makes the city feel like it's coming along faster because we have more. So I have plenty of stone to be able to do that. There's chests down there. They're not loaded. You can't see them. Um, but I have like, I don't know, eight, eight to 10 double chests of stone right now that will probably be able to make one or two of these big platforms. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that in between episodes or like as we go and build this this section up and build up the the rest of the city um, and while we're doing that i will be able to constantly be building this out so we'll be able to have these connection areas here like we've got some of these farms already built um, and then this is like the residential section um, and then this farm doesn't have to move we can have a rectangle out here and it doesn't have to be exact science like it doesn't have to be an exact length um, but I thought it was a, a cool concept, makes it more interesting and makes it so I can really just like fill all of this out. I don't have to feel like uh, I can't like plan things because I don't know where things are going to go. Um, now we can kind of plan like this is all residential. So I can start just kind of like laying out all this residential area around the Octacore. And then we can have all sorts of stuff planned out. And I think it's going to be really, really cool. Now, let me go ahead and get back into building this. Uh, if you haven't I haven't been able to see it through the picture or anything, uh, we've got a walkway up here. And this is just going to be so you can drag <laughs> the log all the way up. We're going to have a uh, piston here. Just need to make the piston piston here. And then it's going to have a, a or maybe the pistons here. I don't know where the pistons at. Wherever the pistons at, there's going to be a piston. It's going to look like it's going to push uh, the log that is going to be here. There's going to be a uh, stone cutter right here because that has an animated blade texture. It looks like a saw. And then it's going to be like pushing here and there's going to be log piles down here where the logs fall. And uh, then, yeah, there's going to be a roof over it. And that is going to be it. So let me go ahead and get working on this, finish it up. And I think that will probably do it for the episode. All right, there we have it. Decided to build up a little bit of this one just to show kind of what the walkway is going to be like and built out kind of the platform there. But this is what we've got currently. Uh, we're going to have a big old wood pile here that is just filled with all types of different wood. It's not going to really be sorted. It's just going to be a mishmash of all sorts of things. Um, I decided to do kind of like to do a mixture because it's more in terms of efficiency. They can sort it out later um, and then they'll be sorting it out into like piles here. Um, and so we'll have a bunch of these sorts of piles all along here. The walkway here, you just kind of go up through here and then you come up to here. And this is just a, a just area for cutting it. This is what the cutting mechanism looks like. So it would like slide along here. This would extend and push it through the blade here and it'd fall down right there. Uh, this texture is pretty interesting right here. That is the bottom side of the stone cutter. And I think it looks overall very, very good. So the idea is that they would be able to walk up here, drag their logs and stuff up here, load them up onto the machine and chop them down. And so they can have access on either side um, and they can walk all the way across to where whichever place needs extra logs and things. Um, and so we'll have maybe some log piles that are piled up along the backside here just to make it feel a little bit more cramped and used. Uh, something interesting I wanted to do, the reason there's so much wood stuff here is because I figured, you know what, sawdust is going to get everywhere. So this is kind of my representation of sawdust in this area. Uh, so we've got the different planks to show different sawdust types, different wood types being cut up and stuff. I think it looks overall very, very cool. So that is all I have time for today in today's episode. So... I hope you guys have enjoyed everything. Let me know what your thoughts are on the new textures, uh, especially the stone bricks is, are the probably the most important one, I would say, but all the textures nonetheless. Let me know what your thoughts are on this little build here, the saw, this uh, sort of sawmill area here. Uh, I'm going to be going ahead and building. Oh my gosh, that guy just spawned. I'm going to be building up the, all of these off camera and probably this one. This is just going to be a big version of this. So nothing in particularly new. So I'm going to go ahead and get this place all fleshed out. And then next episode, we can kind of work on maybe this area here and some of the loading area. But that is all I have time for, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed. And if you are excited for the plans going forward or if you have any thoughts 
on what else to add or anything to sort of change, just let me know down in the comments. I would be more than happy to take a consider take in your, uh, I guess, considerations as well. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. If you like the video, leave a like in real life, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Uh, bye bye.